have you seen him? Those who knew him knew him well. There's an article out there and some videos concerning his imperial majesty. One that caught our attention and a couple of them actually caught our attention. One is this one right here on uh, Dominica Central newspaper that alleges there's nothing wonderful or enlightening about worship of Haile Selassie. And we scanned over and perused this article. It's, it's an interesting read and it requires a, a heavy and a vigorous response just to rebut the lies and the confusion that a lot of these Babylonians circulate and spread in their pseudo-intellectualism that tries to deny a non-Eurocentric approach to Christianity as well as to um, religion and the Bible and the Jesus or Jesus issue as a whole. So we went over this particular article right here and um, as we scan it, as we scan it right here, that's one particular article. It has 42 responses, and it was published at this site by a David, a David Vital on May 2010. And it alleges, as we said, there's nothing wonderful um, or enlightening about the worship of Hylas Lassie to them. But then we thought about it. We said that most of these folks don't even know how the economy, how the economy, um, actually runs or, or why what's going on in the world is going on. Many of them just have learned about the so-called New World Order. But then when we put in our Google search, we put in the Google search, um, Worship of Haile Selassie. Of course, some of the usual, um, the Wikipedia pages come up, the Rastafari movement comes up, and then the third one that comes up is actually this nothing wonderful and enlightening about Worship of Haile Selassie article. But as we go on, we see uh, others, the Church of Haile Selassie, there's um, this uh, Jamaican, Jamaicans.com article, um, Emperor Haile Selassie, that alleges he deny his denial of being the Messiah, which if you listen to the interview as we have done and we have reasoned on it and come to the conclusion that that is in the ear of the hearer, just like the white Jesus is in the eye of the beholder who accepts such folly to be true. But there's also certain um, extreme sects of the black Hebrew Israelites, and they have um, published this 10-part uh, video that is the worship of Haile Selassie and the Rastafarian doctrine in the UK. This is this particular one here. We see it's posted at ethiotube.net. And then we scan through some of the other articles that were there. There's this... Uh, Christafarianism that alleges don't be a Rasta, be like a Rasta. Um, we'll have to probably get into that one. But the main one that caught our interest was this one here by some fundamentalist type of um, black Hebrews or Hebrew Israelite, black Hebrew Israelites. One thing we have to remind ones is that there's a great diversity among the Hebrews and the Hebrew Israelites and black Hebrew Israelites as well as among black people in general. But it would be wrong to assume that all black Hebrews are of the same opinion as these particular Hebrew Israelites, um, black Hebrew Israelites that publish this video or series of videos, The Worship of Haile Selassie, Rastafarian Doctrine in the UK. So there's two basic articles, or we could maybe even say three, that can be addressed collectively and together because they all allege that Rastafari or Rastafarians worship his imperial majesty. And like we said, most don't even know how the economy is actually run. And many of them have just heard about a new world order, even though some say it goes back to 1776. So what we want to address is this subject matter of worship. What does worship mean and how does it connect with this allegation that Rastafarians worship Haile Selassie and what does worship mean? Because most don't even know the meaning of the words and the language they use. Otherwise, life and modern times with all the advances in technology and science would not still be 
worse than it was in ancient times when the people were so-called savage and primitive and so forth and so on. But let's look up the worship of Haile Selassie and let's look up the word worship. So to begin with, what we did was we went to, as you can see right here, this is a fairly old um, copy of a Cruden's Concordance. Cruden's Concordance. And what we did was look up worship. What we wanted to find out is how is worship used within the religious, the Christian um, context? Because before we can even say, yes, we worship or we don't worship, we have to figure out, well, what does the word worship mean? As you can see right here, here is, let's pull this up. Here is um, worship, and we can see that the first time that it was used actually is right here in um, uh, Genesis 22 and 5. In Genesis 22 and 5. If we go down some of the definitions or some of the entries for the word um, worship, we find Abraham here. Abraham bowed and worshiped the Lord. And then we find worship, worshiping, worshipers, worshipers. And it's very, very interesting. But let's go to the etymology of the word worship because most people don't know the scriptures and as even Christ himself said you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God so what we're going to do is pull up right here we're going to pull up our iota um, software Bible software in order to go into the word worship and the very first um, reference to the word worship within the Bible and that is at Genesis 22 and 5 so that we can seek to connect this idea of the so-called worship of Haile Selassie that many of the detractors like to speak on and opine on. So let's go to the Orit, Orit uh, the Fitret, which is the book of Genesis, and we're in Haile Selassie's Bible or the authorized Amharic Bible of his Imperial Majesty. So we go to 22, um, Orit, Zephitret, Hayahulet, Genesis chapter 22, and let's go to verse, uh, let's go to verse 5. So let's pull up verse 5 for the first reference in the Bible to worship. So here's the first reference to worship right here. We have the, ver the fifth verse where it says, Vamarinya says, Abrahamim, now the Targum or the translation for Genesis 22 and 5 is, And Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass or the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So this is actually the first um, reference to worship that we find within the King James Bible. So this is fully in context with the Western, the Western um, civilization and the Western approach to both Christianity and Judaism. We go to the very first reference to the word worship, which we have right here. Now... This uh, IOTA or IOTA software allows us to go into the verse a little bit more deeply. So let's go into the verse a little bit more deeply. Now, here we have the King James Version, and then we have the King James Version with the Strong's Numbers. So as we pull this up, we can see that what we have here is um, worship um, the Strong's Hebrew, according to the Strong's Hebrew Concordance, is the H7812, the H7812. So when we click on that, let's click on that, let's click on that, and what's going to come up now is the Hebrew etymology for the word worship. Now here what we have is um, the word uh, shaha, shaha or shachor, shachor, shaha. Now it says it's a primitive root, and it means to depress i.e., for example, to prostrate, especially, it says, reflexive. And pay attention to this. It says, in homage to royalty or God. 
So this is the root, according to the Hebrew of the word worship. It means to bow self down, to bow down or to bow the self down. It means to crouch, to fall down or to fall flat, to humbly beseech, to do or to make obeisance, obeisance, an act of bowing, but an act of obedience as well, to do reverence, to make, to stoop. And look at this, the last definition or the last um, um, translation or interpretation of the word is worship right here. Now, this is the same as right here in Genesis 22. And five, where it says, And Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come to you again. So he said he will go and shaha or shaha. He would be depressed in the sense of prostrate, especially reflexive, in homage to royalty. So it's an act of homage. Worship is actually an act of homage to either royalty or to God, to God or to royalty. You see, the, the connection between God and man is, is very basic to true Judaism and Christianity. So when one say that Rastafari or Rastafarians worship Haile Selassie, first of all, we have to define what does the word worship mean. Oftentimes, we just take the English those of us who know how to pick sense out of nonsense and to understand um, the word, we recognize that the word worth-ship basically means what, when, what something is worth, the worth-ship, the worthiness or the worth-ship. So here is the very same thing in the Hebrew that we can um, derive from the English. But notice, if you will, that it's the last it's the last of all of these where it says worship. Something else that we noticed that was very interesting, too. When we look again at our concordance, let's look again at the concordance that we have. And as we um, look at this particular concordance for worship, here we have um, worshiper. Worshiper. And it says, if any man be a worshiper of God, and this is... Uh, John nine thirty nine thirty one. John nine thirty one. Right? If any man be a worshipper of God. And then we also notice another another reference in the book of John. Let's see if we can get it. I think it was from John um John uh four. John chapter four. Um John chapter 4, let's see, 4 and 31, um, well, let's go there, let's just go there, John chapter, chapter 4, New Testament, because the New Testament idea, a beautiful New Testament idea that we need to understand. So now, worship, according to the definition that we just showed you, worship or worship, according to the Hebrew, means to prostrate yourself, to bow down yourself. Now, notice those Christians that say they worship Jesus or they worship God. In their worship, you rarely ever see them prostrate themselves. They might go on their knees, but that's not what is meant by true worship. True worship means to go all the way down, to, to put your forehead on the ground. So many of these hypocrites, basically in their own form of worship of God, don't even do you understand, for what they regard as God, what they say that we as Rastafarians do with Hala Selassie. Now, this is very interesting. So they don't even know what the meaning of worship is. You understand, worship can be for royalty as well as for God, and it's a very biblical. We find it throughout the Bible. So all these modern hypocrites that don't even understand the context or the culture of the Bible will like hypocrites, criticize and critique Rastafari, but not do due diligence, you understand, to um, work out their own salvation. Instead, they will criticize the next man's way of life because it's not for them. And if it's not for them, then they need to go on with what is for them and allow others to make their own choices 
for themselves, plain and simple. But here, here it goes right here. Here's John chapter 4. Now, no doubt you recall this is the Samaritan woman. Now, the Samaritan woman and Jesus at the well. Here's what the Samaritan woman had said in verse 20 of chapter, of chapter 4 of uh, Johannes Wengel or John's Gospel. It says, she says, Abata, Abato Chachin Bezi Terara Segadu. In Nantem, so Lia Segid Bet, Yemia Gebao Sefra, the Jerusalem no Telalachu, Alachu. She said, um, our fathers, because she's a Samaritan woman, so she says that her fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye, you all, speaking to Iesus and speaking to the Jews or the Judahites, um, say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And I want you to make a point of this, that, that she's saying that our fathers worshipped. Now, remember what the meaning of the word worship is? Now, we're in the New Testament. So what we should do is do the same thing we did with 22 and 5 of Genesis, is go into the etymology and the root of the word. Let us go and define what this word means. So now in the Greek, worship is the um, G4352. So when we pull that out, what we have is the word um, proskuneo. Proskuneo. What's proskuneo? It's from the 4314, and they say a probable derivative of 2965, meaning to kiss. It says, like a dog licking his master's hand, to fawn or crouch to, i.e., literally or figuratively, to prostrate oneself in homage, to do reverence to, and then it says to adore. Is this what they mean by Rastafarians worship Hala Selassie? It cannot be the above because we don't really see Rastas fawning or crouching in that sense or having to lick his majesty's hand like a dog or any of that. So it must be the secondary where it says to prostrate oneself like the Shaha or Shohor, you understand, of um, Genesis 22 and 5, to prostrate oneself in homage, to do reverence, to adore, to adore. Okay, so that's that's the context, that's the idea. So let's go back to the Mi'raf Maucha and let us continue right here. So here, as we continue in verse 21, it says, Yesusim indi alat, anchi iseit, imenyin bezi terara woin be Jerusalem la aba ye mata segadubet gize yimet targum, and Yeshua or Yesus saith to her, Woman, believe me, imenyin. Believe me or have faith and accept as true what I'm saying to you. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Now, here's what the key that Jesus now says in um, 4 and 22. Right? In 4 and 22, in 22 he says, In Nantes, le matauk uta tisegadalachu. Inya medan ka aihuda na wina le minau kowa in the segdalen. Targum, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the aihud or of Yehuda. Salvation is of the Jews. This is very, very interesting. Now, to the verse that we wanted to touch on with worship to understand the true idea and the true aspect of worship in verse 23 it says yeshalena <laughs> Ab lia segdulet in the nezia ya lutena yeshalena turgum, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in what spirit and in truth. 
for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Note this. It says that the true worshipers will worship the Father, it says, in spirit and in truth. Over here in the Amharic side, it says, La'ab, to the Ab, to the Father, that manifests in and he says, Now, Ahunim Honoal, that the Father seeketh such to worship in spirit and in truth. Not to bow down the physical body or, or to supplicate a master like a dog licking the hand or to, to be depressed or to do, crouch down lowly in some servile. Um, way, but it's a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual matter. It says, Be menfesena, be unet. Now, here in Kuter Hayarat, or verse uh, 24, it says, Egeziavihir menfesena, the sustainer Yahweh, Baruchu, is a menfes, is a ruach, is spirit. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship. Him in spirit and in truth. Here's the key. Xavier manifested no. Yemia sega dulet tim abe manifested no be odnet lia sega dulet yasa felgachual. That Xavier lotu sepan or Yahweh in the Hebrew sense, he who is who he is, he who becomes that which he needs to become or desires to become to fulfill his own will. He who is who he is, Yahweh is a spirit, is spirit. And those who prostrate to him, those who bow down to him, those who adore him, those who submit him, it's in be menfesena, be unet, liya segadu let yas felgachual. It is necessary for those who worship him or who prostrate themselves to him to do so, not in a out of physical sense, but in spirit, and here's the key word, in truth. Do you see that? In truth. This is why there are so many detractors to his imperial majesty and to the reverence, or, or they may say the worship, or the adoration that Rastafari and certain um, peoples, both in the diaspora among the lost sheep, the lost black sheep, as well as among the Gentiles, have for the king of kings of Ethiopia. Why can't they receive it? Why can't they get it? You understand? Why can't they receive it? Because of they're dealing with materialism and lies. You understand? They're dealing with materialism and lies. They're judging by appearances, and they're not judging by righteousness. And it's very clear when we look at these articles, such as Nothing Wonderful or Enlightening about the worship of Haile Selassie, and we go through it and actually look at what they are saying and from what perspective are they saying, how they're trying to detract from the black messiah. This is a continual co-intel pro operation to stop the rise of the black messiah. And it sounds awfully a lot like what the Bible considers antichrist, antichrist against the Messiah. I mean, look at it. Most of these folks don't even know about the so-called New World Order, the Freemasons or the Illuminati until recently. And yet this was all in front of their face. They don't understand the signs on the building or how their government or system or religion or anything has really come about. They worship materialism and money. And it offends them that in this time there are true worshipers of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to touch on this a little bit um, more. And once again, you see this right here. Fortunate scripture simplifies things by the simple declaration that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Doesn't it say that? There's one more scripture I want to show you before we let go of this point right now and probably get back into it a little bit later on. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Mateus Wengel, Matthew's Gospel. Right, the Gospel of Matthew. Let's go to the 28th uh, chapter. Something very interesting in the 28th chapter that we have in our Bibles. And in the 28th chapter, let's get to, um, 
Let's see, where was it? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Verse 16, 28 and 16 of Matthew it says, Asarandu dek amizamorit again. Jesus wada 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 zezacho terara wada galila hedu. It says that then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mount where Jesus had appointed them. In verse uh, 17, it says, By Utima Gizea Segedulet, Yetet Rat Rugina Nebaru. You see that? Now let's go to the English. English, it says, And when they saw him, speaking of Jesus, Yeshua, a man, right? A man. It says, and when they saw him, they did what? They worshipped him, but some doubted. Notice that. Even Jesus Christos, nearly 2,000 years ago, by Utim Gizea Sagadulet, Yetet Rat Rugina Nebaru. It says, and when they saw him, they what? Worshipped him. But, but, some of them doubted. Now, if the Jews doubted Jesus Christus in that time, if it would take the Romans another couple of hundred years and take many others in the world even more hundreds of years to, to get to the truth and to accept this man. Now, what's interesting about Jesus Christus and Jesus Christ and the so-called worship of Jesus Christ is that at the very same time that Jesus Christ was being proclaimed by some to be the Son of God and, and God incarnate, that there were many other peoples on the other side of the world, and even Rome. Rome was worshiping the Caesars, you understand, the Roman gods. And what's interesting is that there is more hatred for this man, for this man, you understand, who has done more good you understand, in Christ as a Christian, proclaiming boldly and openly his faith and doing the works, you understand, in spirit and in truth, and yet has been ridiculed and lied against. This is just even a further reason to recognize what's wonderful and what's enlightening about his imperial majesty.